first debate is about an issue that is very close to home. What's occurring? A decade after its inception, BBC Three is going off air. Today, BBC has got whiter, older and more middle class because it's the BBC Three audience that is the most diverse of all the BBC channels. It's just a massive shame for the BBC itself. BBC Three is a very creative channel. It provides a vital role. It's a crucible for upcoming talent. It does lots of risky and different things. There's nowhere else really on the BBC, in television anyway, that we can do that. If you had to choose between BBC Three and BBC Four, you clearly choose BBC Three because that is exactly where the audience is going. It's moving online, it's moving onto iPlayer. is the beginning of a challenge to BBC Three to say, now move what you do so well into the environment which younger audiences are living in, an, uh, an environment where things are on demand, where people are uh, wanting things when they want it, wherever they, they happen to be. That's the challenge. The Save BBC Three petition that you just saw there now has over 200,000 signatures, and it's also been the question that's been top of our Facebook audience questions page. Uh, isn't that right, Tina? Yeah, it is right. All week you've been clicking like on the questions you want to see on the show, and here's our leaderboard with the top questions, which we published at 2 o'clock this afternoon. The top question was from James Martin, who asked this, is it right to move BBC Three off television screens when it's giving the younger generation a voice that they may not have without the channel? Uh, we actually have the BBC's Director of Television, Danny Cohen, in London, joining us live via a video link. Uh, we're going to talk to you in a moment, Danny. Uh, but first, though, Hayden, is it right to move BBC Three off television screens? No. Why not? <laughs> um, I, I would say that when this was first pitched to us, it was pitched as a sort of efficiency-saving, a cost-cutting exercise. Whereas in reality, that hasn't been the case. It's only £15 million pounds that's being saved, which in reality is a drop in the ocean when it comes to the, B to, to the BBC. I think the red button costs about £15 million. Pounds. I think executive pay is about £20 million. Pounds. I think we're spending £30 million on the Formula One. So there are plenty of savings that we could be making, and I think cutting the one youth channel on the entire corporation isn't the answer. You're, you're nodding along, Paris. Do you agree with what Hayden's saying? I do and I don't. Um, I think that... Well, you make that, your mind up. Well, it's, no, <laughs> it's a valid point, and I think we should cut the, the fat cat's pay at the top. And it does feel a little bit like, you know, the, the suits and, and the, the rich, older, white guys are kind of shafting young people again. But then there's another part of me that thinks television is becoming increasingly irrelevant to young people. And actually, this has been a bit of a PR disaster as far as I'm concerned, because everyone's watching Netflix, everyone's watching YouTube, and if they'd actually spun this differently and said it's just going online and we're going to be doing some new and interesting things, I think people would be responding quite differently to this debate, actually. So it's an interesting perspective. What do you think about that, Hayden? Well, I think it's only 4% of the entire BBC3 audience is actually watching it through iPlayer. So it's a tr tiny fraction of, of the people that actually watch BBC Three. I think it is also really important to have a youth channel actually on your TV screens. You know, it's like you look at the level of British talent at the Oscars right now. You know, who's the next generation of young people that are going to come up and are going to be creating the new Mighty Boosters, are going to be creating the new Gavin and Stacey's and the Little Britons? If they're not, if it's sidelined back online, which is where we came from. I mean, when we, we first started our show. Um, it was such an effort to get the, the, the thing on TV. Everyone turned us away, including Channel 4, which is considered as the sort of alternative channel. And actually getting it on TV, where the majority of people do, what, do consume their content, was a major achievement. Um, and I think sidelining it again online is basically saying to young people, you know, we're not going to believe in you. We're not going to train you uh, into how to be the best you can possibly be in the entertainment industry. And, you know encouraging those people to be the best they can and go into industries like Hollywood and, and represent Britain on an international stage. Yeah, but is anyone going to be watching television in 20 years' time? That's the point. We know that in London, the biggest group of people that, that the BBC well, isn't reaching is young then. urban professionals. Well, let's but do it in 20 years' it, time. It, right it's now, got it's got to change. You know? You know? It's all got to change. Yeah, Something's got to go. And I agree, I would rather see something, something may like have radio, to, I don't know, for the older people go. But <laughs> at the same time, something's <laughs> got to give, hasn't it? I think the older people are very well served right now with BBC yeah. One 
one, BBC Two and BBC Four. And it wouldn't be a massive sacrifice to sort of subsume BBC Four into BBC Two. You wouldn't even need to have an online BBC Four. It could be part of BBC Two and everyone would be very well catered for and you still have a youth channel. OK, uh, yeah, gentlemen over here in the glasses, what do you want to say about this? Um, I think that the, although uh, the BBC Three do show youth programmes, the videos that we've watched and everyone that is speaking over here today, they're saying that um, the youth have moved to online, but then that defeats the point of youth having a very powerful message. And if we're saying, yeah, it's going to be online anyway, so youth already watch <coughs> online, what about everyone else that the youth can influence? They're watching TV. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So if, if we've taken it away from TV, then it's automatically taking it away from everyone else. That's not a youth. We want to show that youth do have valid points and we are the next generation. Um, so it, it needs to yeah. remain on TV. So, <laughs> so the gentleman's point is basically, is the youth voice going to get marginalised by this, by this axing or this moving online, Maddie? Uh, I think it will be. I, I wish I was a youth voice still. I'm not an exact <laughs> target viewer uh, for the BB3, BBC3. But look, I don't buy this money argument. I think Hayden's right to bring up this. You know, you're about to talk to Danny Cohen. The money argument is nonsensical. It's going to say £15 million. The BBC has to make £700 million pounds of cuts uh, by 2017. £15 million out of £700 million is a drop in the ocean. Compared to £200 million pounds the Beeb spent moving to Salford, £100 million pounds the BBC wasted on a digital media initiative that was then scrapped. They spend ten, tens of millions of pounds every year on payouts for BBC executives who are leaving. And let's ask the question about why the BBC is facing this cash crunch to begin with. Because the government that Susan's part of froze the licence fee in 2010, saying we've got to make cost savings, we've got to make efficient savings. The same government that then cut the top rate of tax on millionaires, scrapped the banker's tax, and give billions of pounds in subsidies to energy companies and rail companies. <laughs> That's so no money for young people. You just pointed out that the BBC has an enormous amount of waste in it, and you gave some huge examples of wasted money. So to me, the question is that uh, should we be campaigning to get BBC Three on uh, television? Personally, I'm very worried about it coming off. But I'm an old person, and I watch typically on television. I've got two questions. That's uh, for the gentleman there. That's uh, if it goes online, would you still watch it? And would there still be the creative talent? But can I ask the second question is, should it be on the other channels so that old people like me have to see the programs that you want to see made so that we aren't, in a sense, cut off from what's happening? And it's your answers this, that this, matter this to me thing, on this. That's, yeah. that's where the problem lies. I'm not saying that you're ignorant, but I'm saying that we have a lot to deliver, and it's not necessarily the programmes that I want to watch. Just because the youth has made it and it's directly primarily yeah. at the youth doesn't mean you can't then learn from it. But should it be on BBC One to make sure I see it, or BBC Two, or BBC Four? Yeah, I mean, that's, is, that, is that what we should be doing? Of course, but are I'm we getting that? I want, I want to bring in uh, the BBC's director of television now, Danny Cohen. Uh, Danny, you're listening to all this. Um, you've heard Mehdi say that the argument about uh, saving money is ludicrous. Is it? Danny? Well, uh, <laughs> I'd just like to correct a couple of... Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. So, just on the finances, we're not saving 15 million by doing this. We're saving 50 million a year. True. So, there's a big saving we can make from this. Um, in terms of where we put our programmes, we're going to repeat all of the BBC Three online content on BBC One and BBC Two. So it will get a showing, it will actually reach more people, and we have to save some money. We don't have a choice but to do that, and this is, we think, the most effective way to do it. Uh, you say that you're saving 50 million, but 30 million of that is just being put into BBC drama, isn't it? You're right to say we want to reinvest money in different places, but we also want to make sure that shows like Sherlock, shows like Doctor Who, Atlantis, The Musketeers, have the budgets they need to really succeed. Those programmes are immensely popular with young people, along with shows like The Apprentice and The Voice on BBC One. We have to protect those budgets and make sure we can maintain those budgets, and we can't do everything. We're at a point in the BBC's history where we can't stretch the elastic any further, and we've got to make some big, bold choices. OK. Would you agree with this, Shazia? I think, you know, cost savings have to be made. Anyone can see that, but that's probably because the BBC has been run quite badly and which is why they're in such a mess. If we look back over the years, the BBC tried to close um, BBC Six Music 
Again, you know, people campaigned online on Facebook, that stayed. BBC tried to close the BBC Asian network. Again, 180,000 Facebook signatures, that stayed. So from my point of view, I just feel that the BBC, the, those chaps at the top, you know, um, the Director General, Danny, people like that, they're not really, I'm sorry to say, thinking these things through because it just seems that they backtrack on these decisions. Perhaps what might have been a better idea would have been to say, look, you know, we're, we're facing, you know, these constraints. We're thinking about closing BBC Three and put it to the young people that actually watch it. I think, you know, young people struggle to have a voice in this democratic process. So why weren't they asked, you know, rather than being dictated to, we're closing it, that's it. Uh, yeah, I'll take a point from this gentleman here, please. Service. We've had cuts to careers advice. Everything seems to be, oh, young people don't matter. Mm. So why should we be cutting? Shouldn't it be out of something else? Because we do should have yeah. a voice. And without yeah. BBC Three yeah. and Free Speech, Rick, we wouldn't have a that. voice. Yeah, right. <laughs> Danny, which... What's your comeback to that? So, the first thing to say is BBC Three is not closing, we're moving it online. <laughs> it's not the same thing. We're going to show all these programmes online, where more and more young people are watching them, and we're going to repeat them on BBC One and BBC Two. I think the other thing worth saying is that in the 90s, the BBC had a lot of criticism for investing in news online and online generally. Money was taken out of content to start these new services. Thank God that was done at the time. Similarly, 10 or 15 years ago, we put money into the iPlayer to get the iPlayer going. And people were very critical of the BBC for taking money out of existing things and investing in the future. That's what we're trying to do again. It's quite difficult and it's quite painful. I, I used to run BBC Three and I launched shows from Russell Howard's Good News, Being Human, Blood, Sweat and T-shirts, many others. But I have to make decisions in the end that benefit the whole of the BBC. And I believe we can still keep delivering for young people and keep BBC One and BBC Two strong. But do you think that this has come early, though? Because uh, you were quoted as saying that if you were given an entirely free yes, hand, you would have done this in four or five years' time. This is actually much riskier. Yes, I do. If I had a completely free hand, we would have made this decision in about three or four years' time. But we haven't got enough money to do everything. We haven't got enough money to keep those big shows going and keep BBC Three going in its current form. And we had to be realistic about that. We know this is a gamble. We know this is tricky. I continue to be very committed to these audiences in the way I was when I ran BBC Three. I used to run E4 and I commissioned the Inbetweeners and Skins there. I'm very committed to these audiences. But I had to make some changes. The BBC had to make some changes because we haven't got enough money to do everything and we want to protect the budgets and not make budget cuts across the board at the BBC. Does that seem fair to you? No. No, no because currently there is 300,000 children in the UK that don't actually have access to online facilities in their home. How are these people going to be able to get a voice when they don't actually have access to actually the channel where they can actually enable them to have a voice in the, in the process. Good point. Um, yeah, gentlemen at the back here in the glasses. Um, I completely agree that some people don't have the internet to get online, but if young people think that BBC Three is the only way that they're going to have a voice, then the government need to be doing more to empower young people to get up and make their voice heard. <laughs> yeah, Maddie. I worry that Danny and the other BBC bosses are doing something that's actually quite self-defeating for them in the long run. Because if young people here think, wait a minute, the one channel we've got is being cut away in order to save money, they're going to be less interested in supporting the BBC, less interested in paying the licence fee, which means more cuts down the line for Danny and fellow bosses. So they're actually losing a whole future BBC audience here uh, by actually getting rid of this uh, channel. I think that's actually self-defeating right. in the long run. A, Tina? a couple of points uh, that have come in here. Danny said that all the programmes, original programmes, will go on BBC One, BBC Two. Loads of tweets coming in about Family Guy, which everyone loves. The BBC's <laughs> confirmed it's unable to put Family Guy on iPlayer due to rights problems, meaning that when BBC Three goes, it won't be showing it. We haven't had confirmation of this, but that's what's being said. They've not thought this through, have they? And also the TV licence. Uh, this from Unknown Silver. Isn't it about time BBC scrapped the TV licence, opted, not forced in? Susan, what's your response to that? That's, I really value the BBC, and I don't think you would have it 
or anything even close to it if we didn't have the license fee. Look, I'd be happy to pay more on the license fee, but I can afford it. And the question is, can a whole lot of people? And the answer for them is right now it's exceedingly difficult to pay more. So I think we have to recognise that, and I recognise choices. But I'd say to people, if you want to keep BBC Three, campaign for it, but be really honest. If you actually look at it and think, well, I would really use it online, then be honest about that. If you think it would be really important to get it on BBC One and BBC Two, then pressure them to make sure it goes on BBC One and BBC Two. But uh, let's not just protect it for the sake of it, but if it's crucial to keep the talent coming, to keep young people engaged, then it has an extraordinary value and that's worth fighting for. Okay. Uh, yes. I think at the end of the day, if you're going to hack BBC Three, why can't we hack any more? Because BBC Three is the only channel that we've actually got that has their son, sex, parents, family guy and all of that. But, like, if it's going to be put on BBC One and BBC Two, we're not going to have most of the channels because the older generations aren't going to want to watch it. Yeah. And that's the only channel that we can actually watch what we want to watch. And if we're going to be the next generation, we should have a say in what's going to go on with the future television. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It'll find you. As a trainee sh like student in education, you said that if it's your choice to watch it online, a lot of students don't have that choice. A lot of children within schools don't have that choice. So for them to be able to go home, watch programs that allows them to engage with debate and issue means they're not excluded from the classroom any more than they already are. BBC Three needs to stay for those children alone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this gentleman here has been very patient. Oh, hi. Um, don't say hello to the microphone, it's embarrassing. Um, I don't get why we're not axing BBC Four. Like, I've never watched BBC Four in my life. Uh, is Danny still there? Can we ask him that question? Yeah, hi, Rick. Hi. Yeah, you, you've you've um, sort of now an invisible. So, okay, on there that you are. point about online. What, we can, what we're saying is, because we're repeating these shows on BBC One or BBC Two, if you can't get online, you're going to see these shows anyway. So there's no reason why people won't be able to see the content they're seeing now. Uh, and what about the, the subsequent question, why not axe BBC Four? Was that ever on the table? Well, we looked at all of the options, and we think that BBC Three is the right thing to do because young people are more comfortable online, more online than older people. Mm -hmm. So we think it's the right thing to start with. But if the BBC does suffer further cuts, we'll have to look at BBC Four in the same way. Okay. Can I just pick yeah. up on that and, and read you this message that's come in? Even as a middle-aged white male, I can't see the distinction between BBC Two and Four, so why ask BBC Three? Let's have a look at the power bar. Now, you might have noticed that the question we ran for the power bar down the bottom of your screen, people have been tweeting in, hashtag free speech yes, hashtag free speech no. We asked, is it right to move BBC Three off television screens? 9% of you say yes, 91% of you say no. Well, there you go. It's yeah. fairly conclusive. Uh, yes, gentleman with the lovely hair. Thank you. Um, going back to the licence fee argument, I don't have a problem with licence fee, simply because you look at all the best shows that are made. I mean, not just, what my opinion, what's best, the, what people generally love. Shows like Doc 2, Sherlock, all of the best programmes are generally BBC made. So it makes sense to pay licence fee to get better content out of it. OK. The final licence fee. Yes. Lady here. I personally think it should go off air. I mean, if it is going to be moved to BBC One and Two, why keep the channel anyway? And also, the point about the TV licence. I pay TV licence, but I don't actually watch um, any of the BBC shows, so maybe it should be like... You're getting mugged off. ...an option. <laughs> it should be an option to pay it, not to be forced to pay it. I, I, that, well, that's what I think. Anyway. So how would you counter that then, Hayden? If, if the biggest shows from BBC Three are going to be put on BBC One and BBC Two, mm. then what's the problem? Um, can I just say, full disclosure, in terms of cost savings, uh, BBC bought me a first-class ticket down here, and I think that should be the first to go. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think that works. Did you not? <laughs> I, just, I had to put that on the table because I was feeling too, feeling too guilty. Well, that. you'll walk home, so it's <laughs> <Yeah>. OK. <laughs> I just don't think that is being totally honest uh, with, with the, the people here. I think, in reality, what's going to happen is there's going to be less programming on BBC Three. A lot, like Danny's saying, a lot of that money isn't going to really be a cost saving. It's going to go into drama on BBC One, which is already very well served. I think we're kind of being a bit uh, sort of, um, you know, poetic with the truth here if we say that 
you know, yeah. it's all the content that BBC Three is currently giving us is going to remain on BBC One and Two. It's just not. Okay. Is, is there a, a slight element, and I, I'm worried about this, of people that? like you and, to be fair, me, just trying to preserve their own jobs? Well, it's not. It genuinely actually isn't about my job. I mean, I've got a third series of my show commission, which is going to go into next year, and I'll, I'll be all right, frankly. It's about, it's about the new generation. It's about people out there that I know that I'm trying to work with right now that are putting their stuff online, and that's the only um, place they have to put their amazing comedy and their amazing political journalism and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's that generation that is going to get, you know, done over. Okay. Uh, Danny, do you want to have one final word? We saw from our power bar that 91% of people think that BBC Three shouldn't go off air. Yeah, look, I know it's a difficult decision and I understand that and I've found it quite painful in many ways too. I'm afraid Hayden's just not right to say that about innovation. Being online will help with our innovation. We're committed to showing the content on BBC One or BBC Two and we'll do that. So we'll do that. We'll do that with great passion as we've done with BBC Three over the years and we'll build it online digitally, repeat on BBC One and BBC Two, continue to make great shows like Sherlock and The Voice and Doctor Who on BBC One, and remain very, very committed to young audiences on the BBC.